Have you ever wondered what government evil in your time in life would look like? Well, you get to find out. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And today we're gonna to talk about a case out of Minnesota. And in this instance here, and I will link the story below, but this is one I've been kind of quasi following on and off for a while, because I remember reading a story about it initially when it happened, and now it's gone all the way through sentencing in a criminal trial, and here we are. So basically, the short of it is this. This lady, Lisa Hansen, down in Albert Lee, Minnesota, refused to close her restaurant when uh, the Governor Walls, the little dictarian over there, decided that he can decide whether or not you're allowed to operate your business. So she didn't close her restaurant, invited people to come to it. Um, she's been fined tens of thousands of dollars at this point, uh, and was eventually, she was down in Iowa hiding out, where she was arrested in Iowa, uh, taken to Minnesota, and then faced this criminal trial where she defended herself um, challenged the constitutionality of this thing and said it's not constitutional and the judge didn't like that, got upset with her. And then afterwards, the jury convicted her, which is again wrong. Uh, and then the judge sentenced her, the, so the prosecution asked to sentence her to like five days in jail and fine her like 500 bucks. Something like that, exact numbers in the story below, okay? Uh, and the judge said, says, no, no, no. Uh, I'm gonna sentence you to 90 days in jail and I'm gonna find you another thousand dollars. So I want you to think about this. Ho hopefully that fills you with like a level of rage and outrage. If not, this might not be the video for you. But let's think about where the system had to fail. And it had to fail in multiple places in order for this to happen. First of all, the governor had to decide that he thinks he has the actual authority to tell you whether or not you're allowed to sell food to people. So he decides he has these powers because, oh, they're emergency powers and so I can ignore people's rights. So he passes this law. Then uh, people have to actually report her to, to the government, right? Oh, this lady over here, she's trying to sell food to people. Uh, the police have to get involved. They have to decide down in Albert Lee that they don't have any actual crime to prosecute. So they're gonna go after this lady. She goes to Iowa. She's arrested in Iowa. Now, I don't remember exactly how that went down, but I don't think Minnesota police were the ones to arrest her. Which means, because you're a police officer in Minnesota, right? Not in Iowa. Which means they had to coordinate with other police officers down in Iowa to arrest her and to bring her back to Minnesota. So there's multiple levels of oath breaking taking place here, right? There are police officers in multiple states and multiple cities that are enforcing an illegal unconstitutional order against someone for the crime of, let's remember this because that's important, selling food and bringing her back to the state. I mean, so then it goes to trial. So some prosecutor, some soulless ghoul who works for the system has to decide that he's gonna prosecute this. That goes in, it gets prosecuted. The jury, being probably a bunch of just normies, decide that, oh, well, the, the judge says we have to convict her because she did technically break the thing that the governor said, so, you know, we do have to give back a guilty verdict. Instead of looking at jury nullification, which I would guess those people have never heard of, jury selection's a whole other video, but, these people just go along with it because they do what they're told, like good little uh, plebs and convict her. And then the judge has to go above and beyond what the prosecution asked for to really make an example of this person, to really show that you shouldn't defy the state and insist that you have rights when the state says you don't. Now I lost track of how many that was, but that's how many things had to go wrong here. That's how many people had to ignore basic human rights in order for this woman to now end up in jail for 90 days for the crime of selling food to people. Her crime was she sold food to people and now she's in jail for 90 days. And that is what a modern evil government looks like. They are punishing good, i.e. selling food to people, and enforcing evil. They're saying, no, no, you can't sell food to people. 
There are germs in the air. Therefore, we're going to put you in jail for operating your business, for trying to employ people, for again, and I can't stress this enough, selling food to people. That's the crime. The crime was selling food to people when the state said there are germs in the air. You know the phrase, uh, history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. I, I think there's, there's some definite value in there. And this is one of those instances where I look at that instance and I say, this is clearly an event of gov not just government overreach, but express evil that we're going to put people in jail for the crime of selling food. Sadly, I think it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Think accordingly. Do brave deeds and endure.